Good morning guys and welcome back. So today we're making some DIY grab handles out of parkour rope for the inside of the Jeep. That doesn't matter, it really matter what Jeep you can. You can actually use these on a XJ, YJ, whatever it might be. The mounting points will just be different. It's much easier on the Wranglers because we've got the roll bars to fit them to. But I really want to make my own so I started watching a few YouTube videos well, on YouTube and doing a bit of research and I kind of found the videos maybe a little bit confusing um, they didn't have the best camera angles, their hands were kind of in the way so hopefully in this angle I can get the ultimate camera angles for you guys to make it as easy as possible for you guys to be able to make these yourself after you do it once or twice um, it becomes so easy, it took me a while to kind of figure it out where the loops go and stuff like that um, but once you're finished you end up with um, a product like this and on the back as well pretty damn cool I reckon um, and you can buy well I was gonna buy some of these off eBay for like 35 bucks 40 bucks um, but for about 15 uh, what was it 22 meters um, each roll of this is 22 meters from Aldi um, if I do end up making some more I probably will buy them from a local shop um, an Aussie shop uh, Bunnings they do sell them I think they're about seven dollars so for 22 meters uh, seven dollars so about fourteen dollars for uh, 44 meters of I've got um, the red I've got is a reflective red um, so it will reflect in the light which is pretty cool so I went with two colors you can go with single colors multiple colors whatever you want three different colors whatever kind of tickles your fancy you can mix and match it and it's really cool because you can kind of personalize it to the colors on your Jeep obviously my Jeep you can't see it is white black and I've got red accents on it on it as well so I've actually just gone for uh, uh, white and red. Now the measurement of this cord is the length is 22 mils and the thickness is 4.8 mils as well. Um, if you guys want to do that, calculations to, I think you guys in America use inches, we use millimeters, so whatever. Uh, so I will do like a little conversion rate um, down the bottom. Um, I think the stuff I'm using is might be a little bit thick. You can use thinner stuff if you want, um, but it actually works out really well, the stuff, and it looks really cool. And I think the more I... I've done it, um, the better the connections are at the back. Don't be discouraged if your connections don't look so tidy at the start. It just takes a little bit of practice to get it right. So all, all you'll need is your uh, different type of paracord you'll be using, um, different colors, um, and that's your end result there. The easiest way i found is I've got a board, um, and I've just placed two, two screws to hold it tight. You'll need a lighter to burn the ends together. A tape measure to measure out the lengths of rope um, you'll need. I'll give you all the measurements um, as we go along. Kind of put them down here on the screen so you guys can see them as we go. But also put it down the bottom in the description if you guys want to go back, take a screenshot of that, uh, write them down of what you want to do. Also a pair of scissors as well. I did use a knife for the first one, uh, but it didn't cut it as well as scissors. I believe the scissors actually gives a better cut instead of kind of tearing it. So a pair of scissors uh, and a drill to just connect the two screws on either end. Uh, I did see a guy do it freehand, um, but that seems a little bit harder. First starting out would be something to um, hold your centre cord, this part, nice and tight. So one end goes in there and the other end kind of just loops over the end there. You just want to keep it nice and tight so you get a nice um, tight consistency on your grab handles. So we'll cut out our lengths. I'll put the little descriptions here and also down below as well. Um, and we can get to weaving our grab handles um, but if I get a lot of interest in these as well and if you guys want to make your own um, I might end up selling them but that depends if you guys are interested in buying some of these and you don't want to make your own leave me a comment below um, if you guys are interested I'll just get back to you guys individually if you want uh, but let me know in the comments below so let's cut up our lengths we need um, and get to work all right so I didn't go over how to cut your cord obviously everybody knows how to use a tape measure the measurements for the shorter one which will be the inside one which will be this one here in inches it's 4.2 inches um, and in millimeters it's 106.7 I went over I just went on 107 it can be a little bit over because you'll be um, cutting some off at the end it doesn't really matter too much um, and the two big lengths um, one I did in red and the other one I did in white. They'll be joined together shortly. In inches it's six inches and in millimeters it's 51, 152.4 millimeters. I went a bit over and I did 153 mil. Um, as I said, it doesn't really matter if you go over. So what you'll need, you put these two to the side, the longer lengths to the side first. Get your shorter length, uh, which is 
like that. Get your two ends that you've cut, and this is where you need a lighter. Now I was, I was using matches, and it's not too bad, you can kind of use whatever you want. Most people have a lighter or matches hanging around, or a candle. Just starting to burn these ends. You don't have to catch them on fire or anything, but you have to melt them, um, so you can just stick them together. Uh, the best thing you can do is make sure these tips are not like frayed at all. Try and get them really nice and clean. Just that way when you do your final product, the end result is going to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater. So we'll just burn these. And just stick them together like so. Wait for it to cool down a little bit and you can use your hands to kind of push it together so you get a nice clean look. A bit hot so you want a nice clean look um, obviously hopefully it's not too fat if it's too fat you can mount it again um, just to push it down because the fatter it is you're going to end up getting a bulge uh, inside your rope there so then what you want to do is so you got your strand there you want to fold it in half so it's like so now depending on how you've got yours set up I've got mine set up with two screws you can kind of just want to loop it between, get your secondary screw. Some people use carabiners and stuff, you can use what you want. It's not going to change your end product. Um, it's just one more step you might have to do. So, that's nice and tight. All that's going to do is make it a lot easier for the do it. It's not going to be everywhere. Um, nice and controlled and nice and tight. So we'll get our two lengths of one red and one white. Get two nice looking ends. The nicer ends because at the end you'll be cutting off the other end anyway. So there you see we'll do. And same thing again, you just want to mount them. And just stick them together. Again, make sure they're nice and tight. Ow. Alright, so that's not a bad join. That's pretty good. If you can, like I said before, remount it if you need to, if it's too thick. So this becomes the hard part. So all you need to do is loop it. And a lot of people say oh, I'm not crazy enough to do this and stuff like that. Like honestly it's not too hard. It's just this step here that really confused me at the start and I kind of was going to give up. But it's not too bad. So we'll just change that camera angle. So loop it under. Keep that about centre. Now you see this part here that burnt Part I burnt, make sure you guys get that in about the center uh, so, so it's going to hide away when you finish your product off. So, what you want to do, get it nice and even under the center. This one goes over, and then this one goes over, so on the same size side, then tuck it under. I will sew this down for you guys. Under. and pull through. Same again, so we'll reverse that for you guys who missed it. And then same again, you want to consistently go over with the red, black, green, whatever colour you're using, your dominant colour you want to be shown, you want that to go over the top first, so over the top, over, And pull tight. Over. Over. And under. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get it. 
but once you've done it it's super easy and kind of just bunch them up make sure they're nice and tight but over 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 the same side and under the videos I was watching myself on YouTube on how to do this I got very confused with this somehow over over the top over the top on the same side push it under so that one should be on the same side then under then through the sleep then just repeat the process so over on the same side under and through that loop and pull it tight and make sure you guys are bunching them up nice and tight so you can get a better braid at the end so I'll finish this one off and I'll show you guys what to do with the end um, when we're finished. Alright, so once we're in the end it should look something like this. And you'll notice we've got a lot of leftovers um, at the end. That's because we're going to cut this off and join them together. Now one thing I found really useful that I don't see in other videos is as you go along, just pull tight on the bottom on there. Um, you kind of just push this up, that way you're going to get a tighter weave. Um, and you're going to get like another thread out of this. So we'll take that out. That out. And that should be pretty much the result we're having now. So you can pull that nice and tight. And you can pull that in a bit further. That way it's, it's going to be nice and tight on both sides. Um, and you can you can't really see those joins in there. They're kind of tucked away. Can't really see that one in the middle. I think it's about there. It's nice and hidden. But yeah, pull that nice and tight. That's one tip I haven't seen in other videos. Pull that nice and tight. You get a better result. I think it gets bunched up a lot nicer. Looks a bit neater. Let's probably get one more loop out of that. So you go around, under. You can do it freehand, or you can have like a little vice, a little jig set up if you want. Just a preference of what I find easiest. I think starting off, having the jig really helped. Pull that nice and tight. Alright, so with these ends, what I what I do is, a lot of people say, oh, I'll cut it about a centimetre, uh, two centimetres, whatever it might be, an inch. Two inches whatever it is I kind of find that I was like well that's like I'm not going to go measure an inch or two inches so what I've done um, is to kind of just make a little make it tight with my fingers kind of judge where it is then with your scissors and cut the ends off make it sort of neat same kind of marry it up so it's nice and tight and then Lob the end off. Right, so it's quite neat. So when you push, when you heat it up, you push it together, and it should be nice and tight. So get our fire starter. Heat that. Heat that. And push them together. I found, well it's still hot, it will burn your fingers a little bit, but you can really crimp it together, nice and tight. That way you can hide it. Can't really see that join in there. You can a little bit if you're looking, but it's on the top side, so you will have that part showing. You'll have that on the back side, or opposite, if you want. Whatever you want to do. But crimp, crimp it nice and tight. So it ends up looking like that. Not half bad. Should end up with a nice little product like that. As I said, you can do these in any colour. Um, if you guys are interested in buying some from me or you want to make your own, give it a go. Let me know how you guys go. Um, let me know if this video was helpful. But if you guys are interested in buying some for myself, I can do multiple colours. Whatever you want. But let me know in the comments below. So let's see how these will look in the Jeep. Also, there's different ways to mount them in the Jeep. A lot of people do. 
um, three for one roll bar. So these will end up going around the roll bar and connecting like that and connecting it to there. I think that looks a little bit fuzzy. So what I've done, I'll show you in the jig, is I've just connected these around the roll bar at the front on the JK with some cable ties. And on the back one, you'll actually see the spot in the second uh, where you can actually just screw it into the plastic little sound bar and it looks really nice. So let's jump in the Jeep and see how they look. Shoo. 